The cost of DevOps can be as much or as little as you need it to. There's a few areas to focus on, excluding FinOps. I think that's somewhere you'll get to eventually, but that's not the place you want to start. Um, the places you should start looking at initially will be like a, around people, um, such as their sentiment. Um, are they aligned to business goals? Do they do they feel that they're aligned to those business goals? Um, and maybe there's some indicators such as like high attrition rates or, or slow staff onboarding. Um, and then you can look at efficiencies like could you do more with less and, and faster? Um, and then innovation, like are you creating new opportunities? Um, are you creating new income streams? Are you keeping up with like, business changes? But you don't actually have to spend any money to start doing DevOps. If you've got one or many uh, stream aligned teams that are doing iterative change together uh, in measurable steps, then you're probably behind applying DevOps. And you're not limited to engineering teams for this. You can do this practice without engineering teams. And you might even think it sounds a bit like agile, like you know, with the with the short cycle times, iterative change, and that sort of stuff. And you, there is some truth to this. Um, and you'll often find that there are DevOps teams or teams applying DevOps, sorry, that are that are using those methodologies and getting the value from them. But emphasis on getting the value from them. You don't apply everything as if it's going to yield the results. You apply enough to get the results you want. Um, and and don't oversubscribe to certain things. So where to start? I mean. <laughs> Let's start with the pain, right? This, and look at the areas that are hurting the most and what small measurable steps you can make to improve them. And again, small measurable steps. You're not looking for perfection here. You're looking for iterative measurable change. And, and what you wanna be doing is making that change, reviewing it on a regular cadence, and if it's working, amplify it. And if it's not working, maybe you wanna pivot, do something else. Um, or maybe just abandon it outright. Like maybe the the the, the evidence just suggests that actually this is the wrong thing to to tinker with and try try something else. And then once you you've got to a state where you're happy with the improvement, move on to the next thing. But please remember to to go back and iterate. Um, so I've spoken about making changes, but I haven't really given some examples to this either. Um, so there's um, like slow developer cycle times. There could be a number of reasons for this. It could be poor developer environments, so onboarding is really, really slow, or everyone's got their own way of setting up the developer environment, so therefore what you actually get out of the end might be different to what everyone's experiencing on their local machines. Your CICDs could be slow. They could do with like parallelizing maybe, or you've got flaky tests that you should probably try and make a bit more stable or rework. Or maybe you're reliant on a QA team instead of your automated tests to do your testing and maybe you should look at doing more automation so they can then focus on the stuff they absolutely should be focusing on, right? And a lot of these are focusing on shifting to what we call to the left, which is about making, uh, getting feedback as early as possible in the process. You don't want to be waiting until the end of the development lifecycle to get a bunch of feedback. You want to get it as early as possible so you can make changes and iterate. Um, and another reason for, for pain could be vague processes or undocument processes or, or processes between two teams is slight, like for the same thing is subtly different and as you transition or hand things over, like there's an impact there and, and maybe some effort should be spent on codifying those things, you know, agreeing on what the pattern should be. And actually you, you can get some benefits just from that, like it's not actually a technical thing, it's purely human and relationship building that's actually going to make the improvements here. Um, and then let's look at low team sentiment. Some people might not actually be... Um, <sighs> they might not have the will to contribute to a project as much as they otherwise would be. And this might be because they're bored, they're dealing, they're firefighting with some of the things I've referred to earlier, or actually they're just not feeling empowered to make change to improve those things. And actually the start of that journey should be empowering those people to make those changes. They, they're gonna feel the pain more than anybody else. They'll tell you what, what's hurting and what could do with fixing forward. And, and you probably should start the process by actually speaking to those people. That's where you're gonna get the measure, measurements from. Um, and from this, you should start seeing some, uh, some outcomes. Like you won't see them overnight. Again, you want to be measuring regularly and over a small period of time, you, you should expect something, but it's not overnight. We're talking like, I don't know, maybe one to two weeks, actually, or, or one week, or, or maybe you might find the task is big enough that you have to wait longer. But always have the people that are involved in the step, like they're the ones doing the monitoring. Right, they're the ones who, who feel it. They're the ones who can feedback whether they're feeling an impact, because the impact might not necessarily be latency, but it might be around like, um, uh, psychological safety and, and things like that like those are still measurable improvements to take into account and from this you'll get like um, like repetitive car tasks become less repetitive like work is delivered faster maybe with an improved quality inter-team relations improve uh, st happier staff and colleagues um, and also let's not forget that we're talking about innovation as well you should be creating room for further improvement and opportunities